Hey guys, my name is Boris. Thanks for tuning into my seminar tonight. Pretty excited to be doing this and um, I will make these slides available for you as a freebie download uh, afterwards. So if you miss anything, want to go back to it later, you can do that on kind of your own pace. And if you have any questions or if you think of anything afterwards, you can reach me directly at boris at getrealer.com. Always happy to help out. So shoot me an email if you like. So we're going to be talking about how to bookmark clients by increasing your Google My Business rank. And basically, that's just a little map pin on Google Maps. So when someone is searching for cleaning services in your locality, uh, Google will show them typically three map results. And so if you can rank on that, you can get clients much more quickly. So a little about me, I started Westmaid's Cleaning Services at the end of 2016. And... Uh, we grew pretty quickly in the last three and a half years, and most of that is due to the Google My Business. Um, that kind of led me to start a software company called Relayer, and basically kind of helps automate some of our processes in business to help us leverage our growth even faster. So in the last three and a half years, we've done around $1.5 million in total revenue and around 10,000 customers uh, total. And again, that's mostly the power of Google My Business. So once you're kind of ranking, they just come to you on a regular basis. And I'll show you some of that growth real quick here. So as you can see, started off pretty slowly. First month at 200 bucks, went up a pretty good pace. Uh, July we did 10 and a half thousand, and then that August we did almost 20,000, so doubled our growth again. Pretty steady growth after that. And then February we did 27,000 and March we did almost $42,000. So again, we doubled from 20 to 40,000. Eventually getting up to $62,000 and then kind of stayed in the area for a bit. And then of course the coronavirus just killed us when we shut down. So the first month we only had $12,500. But you can see it's going back up nice and steadily. And again, that's due to Google My Business because as soon as the clients come searching for your services, you're in the right spot to pick them up. So a few things we're going to talk about today, how to properly set up your Google My Business, uh, some of the trust factors Google looks at and kind of how to optimize them to increase your rank and then how to automate your review process because reviews are a huge part of uh, not only trust for Google, but also on the customer side. So the cool thing, as I mentioned, is once you're ranking, it's pretty automated. Um, customers just come to you because you're on Google. And you can see my Stripe account here. Every day we get at least one booking. And these are customers that we don't pay for. They search for cleaning services in Calgary. They find our website and they either call us or book directly online. So again, this is the crazy power of Google My Business. So last 28 days, we had over 9,000 views on our profile. And if you're paying for 9,000 views on, for example, Google Ads at $10 a click, um, you're looking at $90,000 in ad spend, which is insane. This is all free traffic that we receive. So a big part of the listing is what we call a NAP and not sleeping like this dude here uh, stands for name address phone number of your business and i'll show you why that's important pretty quick here so when you're setting it up you just want to make sure that your name is correct so use the actual name of your company that is listed on your website that's super important Make sure it's up to date. Likewise with your address, make sure it's the same one on your website. Make sure it's up to date in case you moved or whatever. And your business phone number. Again, make sure it's the same one that's on your website, the one you're actually using. And if you've changed it, make sure it's up to date. So that's that NAP name, address, phone number. So once you've uh, created your Google My Business, or if you already have one and you might have updated it, give it a couple days, um, especially if you're verifying it for the first time. Google might send you a postcard, it might take two weeks. Once your profile is live, 
just Google your business name and you should get this info card that pops up. If it doesn't, that means it's not verified yet, so give it some more time. But basically, you kind of want to look at how they've listed your uh, business info. So you can see for us, it just says Westmaids instead of Westmaids Cleaning Services. Address is exactly how we wrote it. Uh, sometimes they will shorten the addresses. So for example, if your address is 31 Center Street and you spelled out street, they might shorten it to ST. And that's going to be important later on. And of course, phone number. Uh, they don't typically change it, but make sure that it is actually your, your real phone number. Okay, so let's look at some of the trust factors. Uh, so Dave Gerhard is a marketer, and he said, you can have a beautiful website and great logo, but no brand. And uh, I like this quote because it really talks about what Google wants. They want to see real brands, real cleaning companies, not just some fly-by-night operation. And that's who they're going to trust, these, these real brands. And uh, it's also really important that your brand has local relevance um, because if someone is searching for a cleaning company in LA and you're in Detroit, you're never going to show up. And I mean, you don't even want that, right? You don't want people from LA calling you when you don't service them. So you basically need to be able to trust that you're actually in the location that you say you are. So if you're in Detroit and someone in Detroit is looking for cleaning, Google is going to say, okay, well, this is a Detroit cleaning company. Check them out. And so how do we kind of build that trust? Basically by ensuring our information is consistent. And that's kind of that NAF I was talking about, the name, address, and phone number. Because um, the more consistently we use it throughout the internet, essentially, um, the more trustworthy it is to Google. And that's part of building that brand is ensuring that everywhere we have our information listed, that it actually matches up every time and Google knows that it's actually correct. So how do we ensure that consistency? Um, basically, there's kind of three main things. The citations, which are really any web page where your NAP can be listed. So Facebook is an example, Yelp is an example, uh, any local chamber of commerce is an example, other directory websites. Anywhere where you can have your um, business name, uh, business address, and business phone number. And you got to make sure that the NAP is consistent wherever it's listed. Because if you start having different variations of your name or address, Google is going to look at all that and say, well, we don't actually know what's correct. Is this even a real company? And so when someone in Detroit is looking for a Detroit cleaning company, but they can't really figure out if you're actually in Detroit, which part of Detroit, they're just not going to show your listing to anyone. Website indicators are another big component, and they kind of work hand in hand with citations. Uh, we'll go over that. And uh, Google My Business reviews are huge, not only for Google based on the customer input, but also for the customers themselves. I'll show you some data on that, but basically, if you want to convince customers that you're a good company, you need to have convincing reviews. So again, what are citations? Pretty much any web page that has your name, address, and phone number for your business. So again, Facebook, Yelp, um, Chambers of Commerce, Yellow Pages, any sort of directory type website. Again, why do they matter? This is one of the huge uh, foundations for trust. Uh, Google will read these citations, these directory websites, and if the NAPs are consistent across all of them, that increases your chance of Google trusting you. Because again, if your NAPs are inconsistent, you have different phone numbers, maybe you forgot to change some of them after you got an office phone number, maybe you got an office space and then you changed your Facebook address but didn't change your Yelp address, Google's going to say again, we don't really know if this is a real company. They, they can sort themselves out. So again, just looking at the NAP verification, a bit of a close-up. Once your page, uh, your Google My Business listing is live, double check the name, see how they spelt it, double check the address, super important, because again, they might change the abbreviations or whatever. And again, phone number probably will not change unless you put in a typo. So again, business name, business address, and business phone number. So here's an example of a citation for us, one of those kind of directory websites, which is Facebook, right? So business name, address, and phone number at the bottom there. 
So on Yelp, you can't see the name because it's further up the page. Um, but again, here's the address. Here's the phone number, all exactly the same format. Better Business Bureau, um, business name, address. They hide your uh, full detailed address, um, but it is entered. So in this case, they've shortened it just to our city and postal code, uh, zip code in the US. Um, but they have the phone number listed here. And Alignable is another kind of social network, which is an example of a citation. So again, business name, business address, business phone number, all the exact same format. And so there's literally hundreds of these citations that you can create profiles on and list your business. Um, top 50, top 100 are usually pretty good to kind of increase that rank without getting too, too crazy because there's literally hundreds. Um, so these are the top 50 that I have found and I'm going to include this for you guys in the freebies as well. So make sure you download it because it'll also give you a really good head start in building those citations. And um, they will take time because some of them might have profiles that they auto-generated. So you might have to claim them and then potentially update depending how they enter the information. Um, if they don't, you'll have to create a new one. And this does take a bit of time, so I imagine 50 will probably keep you busy for a while. Okay, so let's talk about those website indicators that tie into citations. So once again, we got the NAP, name, address, phone number, and the website footer. A Google Maps widget with the actual address that you have on your Google Maps listing. And backlinks, which I'll only briefly mention because it's kind of a very, very different topic. So here's our footer of the websites. Um, our name is further up, but you have, again, the address, exactly how we have it on the Google My Business listing, and the phone number. And here's our Maps widget. So we have specifically a Google Map inserted with our actual Google My Business listing address. And so this will basically tell Google that the address on Google My Business is in fact the address that we use for our business on the company website. So if that makes sense. You're basically saying that you have the address in these two different spots. They're the same. This is really our address. And so again, that kind of builds up that trust that this is in fact your real address. So just quickly touching on backlinks, because again, super complicated topic. Um, but basically a backlink is a link from a website to another website. Uh, so when f in your fa Facebook business profile, when you enter your company website, that is a backlink to your website from Facebook. And so the more of these you have from social profiles, maybe the news if you were um, had a story written about you or featured or whatever, or sometimes even other company websites. If you collaborate on, for example, a blog post or giveaway or something, Google will look at all these and the more backlinks you have, the more authority they'll give you. And this ties into the uh, maps rank as well. So let's talk reviews real quick. Um, super important. So I found this uh, one study from 2019 and basically they looked at a few different things and uh, this graph here asks, do you trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations? And so the demographic of 18 and 54, uh, basically 40% of that entire demographic said, yes, they always trust online reviews, which is nuts because that means that if they read good reviews on your listing, they're just as likely to believe them as if their friends said, hey, check out Westmade's cleaning services which is insane to me because they don't actually know anything about your business. They're just going off a review. And then also, um, this was a cool question because it wasn't just about, do you trust the review? It was asking, what do you look for in the review? And so a few of the kind of important factors for people was how recent is the review? What's the overall star rating of uh, the listing? How many reviews and how legitimate? are they uh, plus some other kind of factors but uh, i thought these first three were pretty interesting because this basically tells you that you have to always be getting reviews um, because to be recent you have to constantly be getting reviews for them to be recent and 
Um, you will occasionally get bad reviews, which may or may not be warranted. Um, but again, you got to keep getting good reviews so that you can maintain that good star rating. And then you want to be building your quantity of reviews all the time as well. So again, looking specifically at the recency of reviews, um, the demographic of 18 to 54 said that they basically only look at, well, two thirds of them said they only look at reviews within the last two weeks. Uh, and the remainder kind of said between one and three months. And then similar with the 55 plus age demographic, um, basically 70% of them said that within those two to two weeks to three months is kind of the range they look at, which again is kind of the recency rate. So basically every three months you should be getting a handful of reviews. Um, just to make sure you're keeping them fresh. Uh, so this is pretty uh, time intensive and customers don't really want to leave reviews if they're happy, which is ironic. <laughs> it's always the unhappy customers because they have a bone to grind and they're not going to leave you alone. Um, so they kind of spend time making your life a little bit miserable. Whereas happy customers, they're happy with their house cleaning and they move on with their lives and that's it. So... Um, that's kind of how I developed Relayer because I found that it was really, really difficult to get people to leave these reviews. So out of 10,000 customers, we've had mostly happy ones and we have nowhere near 10,000 reviews because people just don't really want to do it. Um, so I'll kind of show you um, how we developed and why it works so well. So basically the first thing you want to do is you want to go back into your Google My Business and you want to create what's called a short name, which is, let me find it. So this right here is called a short name. Um, and basically as the name implies, you want to keep it short. So we just called it Westmaids. And once you enter this, you can actually generate a link directly to the Google review text box. And basically you can find that here. So share review form. And then what you wanna do is you wanna take this and ideally text it to your clients. Uh, we've tried using email, it just doesn't convert. People get a million emails a day, so they don't really look. Uh, but text is a lot more personal. Everyone opens all their text messages. So you want to basically text them this review form and it'll take them directly to the text box to leave that review. Uh, problem with this is that it's uh, really, really hard to keep track of, especially when you have hundreds of clients every month like we do. Like it's impossible to manually basically track every single one through the entire process of the reviews. And so, again, that's kind of where the software relayer comes into play. So I'll give you guys a quick demo of how that works. Actually, I'll give you a quick kind of summary of how it works. So basically what we do is we enter the customer's information. It'll shoot them a text. Uh, in this case, it's my dad because we clean his office. So it says, hey, Drashko, Westmaids have asked for you to leave a review. Click on the link. Uh, he opens this page right away, asking for feedback. So it rates five stars, leaves verbal feedback. And you click submit. And then it says, cool, thank you so much. Would you mind leaving us a Google My Business review? He says, sounds good. And then boom, right away, straight to that Google My Business review page. So no fooling around, um, you know, no trying to navigate, finding the listing online, finding reviews. It goes straight to it. And so I'll show you how quickly that actually works when you're entering uh, the customer as well. So this is the dashboard here, and then I will enter an example here. Location, if you have multiple locations, you can select. Uh, we're just using the one. You can have multiple platforms if you want, although for Google My Business, I think it's kind of the most worthwhile. Then you submit. Okay, so it creates a customer really quickly. And then it'll tell you what platform. You can actually track whether they've rated or not. And then we can request a review. So you can see it sent a review. Um, basically, it will text you the request. So kind of what we saw on the slide there. 
Um, you just click right through it. So I submitted the review and then right away we can update it on here. So go back to customers and then you can see here redirected. So that means it actually went to the Google My Business page after leaving the review. And if we click, we can actually see the feedback as well as the star rating. And that's how easy it is. So that's pretty much it. Um, I know there's a lot of information and it's complicated topics. So again, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, boris at getreallier.com. Uh, go to our, our page as well for the summit specifically. It's uh, getreallier.com slash made summits. Um, so I'm offering all the freebies I kind of mentioned. So all these slides plus the citations. I'll invite you to our Facebook group as well. And also we're offering 50% off the review software for all attendees. Uh, it's a regular 75 bucks. You get it for half off. It's an amazing deal. And um, basically you can leverage automation and get way more reviews way faster. So thanks again. And let me know if you have any questions.